Now in this demonstration I want to concentrate on getting interesting and attractive colour in the shadows. My source material is a small sketch of an old Folly lighthouse which I've painted both in the studio and on site so I'm quite familiar with the subject. So let's make a start. Now this is the little sketch I'll be using and as you can see most of the indication and shading on here is about telling the viewer where the shadows are. Both the um, car shadows and the uh, shaded side of the, uh, the buildings. Now as usual I can start where I like. So I'm going to start at the top and concentrate on getting the shadows. Um, a little bit of burnt sienna. Now some burnt sienna with a tiny bit of ultramarine just for the right hand side shadow. Back to some light red. And then some burnt sienna just to make it a bit darker. Not too much, and a little bit of ultramarine, not, not too much water in this. Some ultramarine. It's only just a sliver of the this roof here, which is mainly lead. Very dark underneath here. So we can probably afford to use a bit of Payne's Grey. Try and restrain your, your strokes so that you paint each area just the once. Just going to tidy that edge up there. Um, this is some cerulean with tiny bit of alizarin, crimson, just to give the car shadow here. That will um, put a little bit of raw sienna with it to change the colour a bit. So get interesting colour in the shadows. It's the tone which is the important thing. And in fact, you could say this is an exercise in keep trying to keep the same tone, but change the colour. Which in a sense is all about paint consistency. This will be slightly darker under here, where it just disappears then raw sienna let it all let's have some cobalt with the cerulean let it all mix on the paper now this is a cast shadow of the little lip that comes around here. So for a little bit of a lizard as we come around here. Down this side, I'll emphasize that. That'll be a sharp edge shadow. This helmet, however, will be a softer edge because it's painting the, the shaded side of the round tower. Um, so rinse the brush, just wipe it a bit, and then just go down here, just to dampen the neighbouring area for the wash to escape to, and that'll soften that edge. Now instead of, uh, don't stop, let's put in this 
shadow or this roof here so that's a sort of a blurred edge there um, let's go back with a little bit more sort of blue um, make it slightly darker up here away from that um, there's some dark lead on here let's have just a bit of true to self to a bit of Payne's grey along there keep the paint sufficiently um, wet to flow nicely This is a bit of ultramarine and cadmium, uh, cadmium red for a nice deep shadow across there. So all of this will be in the shade. There's a bit of raw umber there. Now this tree is very dark, so Virgin and burnt sienna and that of course will be quite a blurred edge all in the shadow lighter on the sorry it'd be dark a bit darker on the the right hand side got muddled up there so this will be dark here. It's dark and let's just add a little bit of ultramarine and raw umber. And I'm just going to lighten this edge here with a little bit of um, Uh, Oriolan and then the, the this end is fairly dark because it's all in the shadow so put a bit of cerulean with that now to make it a bit more interesting And then finally, in this section, we'll just indicate some of the grass here. Should change to a bigger brush, really, but the plant will change to a bigger brush. The plan is to um, leave this slightly unfinished. This incidentally is a piece of of the high white Saunders Waterford rough 200 pound paper. I vignette that a bit, leave the viewer to finish that off. They'll probably hopefully make a better job of it than I can. There's one or two little pools on the marsh here. So I just cool it down with a little bit of cobalt be bold with your colour don't forget in watercolour it always dries lighter now let's just stop and let that dry out for a few moments now we'll just finish off some of the um, roofs on the and walls on this um, these outbuildings of this uh, lighthouse um, just a sort of a nondescript colour, really light red um, here. 
that's let's make it a little bit darker I'll put some ultramarine with it um, just restate the, the roof of here and then um, we've got the roof that will cast a shadow across that roof there But of course, as it over here, it'll be a bit lighter. Now, where possible, try and keep to this little guide of touching the paper once and uh, moving on. Uh, loose painting isn't really about being careless and slapdash. It's about trying to paint each area as quickly, shall I say, as positively as you can and then moving on to the next bit and living with whatever mark you've made. Here's a cobalt to get a little bit of shadow across that here. And that will obviously hit the grass. There. There'll be a bit of dark on some of this grass here. And then let's darken this green. And it's all a bit lost, so we don't. We don't want to emphasise that edge. We'll have enough hard edges in the um, in the actual building. Look, ultramarine, so sort of slightly darker in here, here. Can just see through that and there's a dark tree bush here Viridian a bit of burnt burnt umber to make it a little bit darker Yeah. Then we'll make some quite thick paint, um, cerulean and um, so some raw rumber which is always nice heavy paint to get these dark barge boards there just a little bit of drawing of the hinges perhaps on the doorway so that will be enough for that just going to soften that edge there to distinguish it from the hard edges of the buildings. Well, we'll just let that dry for a few moments and we'll set about the sky. As you can see, much of this has been defined now by the, the shadows. Let's just suggest this fairly simple sky. Um, a bit of cobalt. In fact, you could probably 
do it very quickly over that top there and this left hand side will be defined by that sky now a bit of raw sienna and light red tiny bit of cobalt um, to give me a warmer feel to the sky um, a little bit of movement as well some trees there a bit of light blue here back to some very very dilute light red if the rest of the picture is unfinished then I don't want the sky to be over finished either otherwise it'll look as if it's been hasn't been painted in a consistent way now while that's drying we can indicate some of the darks ultramarine and burnt sienna quite thick um, a little dark in here here tiny bit of water and there's some windows here Shadow down that side there. Now while that's drying, we we should be able to set about the um, these trees. Just indicate them. The raw sienna with the viridian. Paint is reasonably thick. We get some interesting edges. I'm a little bit lighter there. So a bit of aureolan with the um, Virgin. Burnt sienna now with the virgin. A bit of ultramarine now just for fun here in these deep shadows. Just with your fingernail, just breathe a little bit of light into it with them. Just a suggestion of a fence post. If you overdo it, you can just dab a bit of green over it. Just going to darken a little bit of that. I just didn't get that quite dark enough. And now 
I'll just stop there, have a clear up, and then a final few marks. Now just one or two little final marks. Don't forget the object of this little demonstration was to introduce as much colour as you can into the, um, the shadows and try and, there's a tiny little aerial here which we'll just put in um, and there's a, it's not on the original but I remember there were some twigs sort of growing up here or sort of sapling which just adds a bit of interest. And now the, the only other little thing I'm, I'm going to do is just warm this area up with a glaze of raw sienna. But what I've, I always suggest to people to get that nice clean fresh look is to concentrate on painting each area once. Touch the paper once with the brush with the mark you want to make it the, you want to leave at the end. Um, and never paint anything twice until you've painted everything once. Okay, so I'm just going to warm this up here with a glaze of raw sienna that'll make it a little bit more solid and I won't have any sparkle to compete with the white of the uh, of the lighthouse um, and then just one or two little sort of calligraphic marks to, to lead you up to the to the lighthouse. Just darken that to show that up. And if it looks sort of clean and simple and fresh, then stop. Don't forget, um, we don't always paint, as someone once said, we don't always paint the world as it is. We paint, paint the world as we see it, or as perhaps we would like it to be. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching that um, short demonstration. The most important thing to get over is just enjoy the painting process. Just lighten up a bit. Um, and that enjoyment eventually will show through in the painting. Um, loosening up is a very strange thing. Um, I think it's best described as look, making the picture look painterly. Um, don't try too hard. That's the important thing. Or at least don't let it show that you are. Thanks for watching again.